वेलकम टू राज मल्होत्रा आई अकेडमी आई एम सुरभि सरदाना एंड दिस इज प्रिलिम स्प्रिंट 2022 वेयर वी डिस्कस द मोस्ट एसेंशियल टॉपिक्स फॉर यूपीएससी सिविल सर्विसेज प्रिलिम्स दिस ईयर द टॉपिक फॉर टुडे इज स्पीशीज इन न्यूज और द इंपॉर्टेंट स्पीशीज फ्रॉम एनवायरमेंट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू दैट यू मस्ट नो एंड यू मस्ट लर्न अबाउट सो दिस विल बी अ सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स व्हेन वी डिस्कस ऑल द स्पीशीज ऑल द इंपॉर्टेंट स्पीशीज वन व्हिच हैव बीन इन न्यूज सेकंडली फ्रॉम वेयर क्वेश्चंस हैव बीन आस्क्ड अगेन एंड अगेन बाय यूपीएससी इन प्रीलिम्स एग्जामिनेशन सो वी विल बी कवरिंग ऑल द स्पीशीज इन द सीरीज ऑफ इन द सीरीज ऑफ स्पीशीज uh the topic for uh, the topic for today contains five species great indian mustard pangolin crocodile bugun leo kechla and a uh, collar leaf nosed bat see uh, there are two types of questions that can be asked from species uh, either there could be an important spe- species for example elephant tiger lion great indian mustard pangolin crocodile such species have separate questions ascribed to them you can see a full question dedicated to these types of species and then there are miscellaneous species which are endangered or which are important from environment perspective but they are asked by upsc in match the following answers or learning about these species just the knowledge of these species will help you eliminate a lot of wrong statements and help you reach the right answer in most of the questions in many questions so it is very important that you read about all the species all the important species and the ones which have been in news starting from great indian mustard see it is a uh, it is the state bird of rajasthan first of all when you study about species just note down all the state birds and state animals of all the states of the country uh, questions from this area are regularly asked so great indian mustard is the state bird of rajasthan its status is iucn status is critically endangered less than 150 individuals are left in the wild and a lot of conservation measures have been taken especially by rajasthan state government to save this to save this uh, save this uh, bird it is a very long bird it has long neck and long legs as you can see so it is a tall bird with long legs and long neck the tallest individuals may stand up to 1.2 meters so uh, that's how tall it is and it is one of the heaviest flying birds the heavier the bird the uh, tougher it is to fly but this is the one of the heaviest flying birds as far as conservation status or you know threats are concerned rajasthan has lo- has a lot of mineral resources where this bird is found in the desert national park uh, the area surrounding that has a lot of mineral resources so loss of habitat is there what is its habitat it survives in it is found in grasslands so that loss of habitat is there secondly a lot of wind and ener- wind energy is generated wind turbines are located in that area so what happens when this bird is trying to fly so it gets trapped in those wind turbines so that is an issue power lines power lines it gets trapped there and the bird dies there so these are some of the problems hunting is also one of the problems but it has been kept under check very successfully by the state government so uh, this is a very important bird species let's read about this in detail and let's see what is the what is the habitat of this uh, this bird and where is it available so make sure that you know this that dry grassland is the habitat dry grassland and scrublands and less than 150 birds are left and its iucn status that it is critically endangered very few a uh, very few sp- uh, very few number of birds are left in the wild also you have to remember that its food habits it is omnivores they are omnivores these birds are omnivores see in this map you can see here there are three colors so the thing that you are seeing in black here is actually the depiction of presence of great indian mustard so it is present in rajasthan parts of gujarat maharashtra andhra pradesh karnataka so it is it is supposed to be present at many places but its major population is found in rajasthan only and that's why project great indian mustard has been started by rajasthan government here you have the desert national park located in this area of rajasthan where these birds are found so project great indian mustard is there by rajasthan government also there is something called firefly bird diverters when birds try to fly they get stuck in the power lines here so what is done by the rajasthan government that they place mirrors on power lines so when a bird approaches towards that power line it sees its reflection or light is reflected in the mirror and it changes its path so that it does not get stuck in the power line so to conserve them firefly bird diverters have been placed what are the threats to this bird 
Threats are always illegal. Hunting is always there. Loss of habitat is always there. As I told you, a lot of mineral resources are located there. Wind turbines are there. Power lines are there. So th these are all the threats by collision with infrastructure, particularly power lines and wind turbines. And grasslands, grasslands is a very important ecosystem and it has not been given consideration by the government as much as it should receive. So we know that uh, these boats thrive in grasslands and grasslands are depleting day by day. So that's the threat around it. Moving on, the second one is pangolin or the scaly anteater mammals of the order Polydotta. So Pangolin is known to be the most hunted animal of the world. Why is it so? Pangolins are used as a source of meat or a source of protein which is easily available and secondly they have many medicinal properties especially in the China area. There are 8 species of pangolin and out of those 8 species only 2 are found in India, the Indian pangolin and the Chinese pangolin. So out of the 8 species of pangolin, the Indian pangolin and Chinese pangolin are there in India. What is the IUCN status? What is the conservation status of pangolin? Broadly, it is endangered. But Indian pangolin is just endangered and Chinese pangolin is critically endangered. So there are two species. We will see their distribution where they are located in India. So uh, as here you can see this part in green, this part in green or grey as, as it is visible to you starting from here to here, here and this expense. This is the uh, this is the area where Indian pangolin can be found and here this area is the distribution of Chinese pangolin. So this is uh, you know mostly the bordering area with China or the northeast is where northeastern hilly areas or the foothills of Himalayas here. So this is the area where Chinese pangolin is found. Just remember the conservation status of both the things and if a question is asked that how many species are there and how many species are found in India. So you have that information that out of 8 only 2 are present in India. So pangolins actually eat ants. They do not have teeth. They are scaly ant eaters. These are scales as you can see on their body. So these scales are formed out of protein. They, f uh, they just survive only by eating ants as you can see in this picture also. They have, they are just tooth toothless and have a sticky tongue and ants is what they survive on. And they are very solitary animals, they do not live in groups. So since they are very solitary, they do not move in groups, hunting becomes easier and because you know it is very easy to hunt a lone animal, an, anim an animal who is just uh, going out alone in the forest. The special part about pangolin is and here a very important question can be found that what is their habitat? As we saw that they are found almost all over India and you know in, uh, or in many pockets of India. So you can see that there must be different kinds of forests and grasslands located there. So pangolin is a species which is very ad adaptable to any kind of forest or grassland. It can be found in tropical forest, it can be found in open grassland, bamboo forest or like most of the habitats it can survive in. So what are the threats there? First of all it is uh, you know since it is a very you know habitable animal it is also found near villages and in villages there are many local communities who are very poor. So they join hands with the mafia and they carry out illegal hunting of pangolin either for meat for their medicinal properties or for the protein scales of uh, pangolin they are the most hunted animals of the world so a uh, trafficking of live pangolin and uh, its scales is a highly lucrative business so this is a threat which is carried out by the organized mafia and hunting and uh, poaching for local consumptive use now also despite its status of being endangered and critically endangered there are many villages there are many people which actually consume pangolin in the form of meat so this is a very rampant activity consumption of uh, pangolin is a very common uh, common thing in many indian villages so that has to be stopped that this is a threat coming out of there the next one is crocodile we will be discussing about three important species of crocodile which are found in India. The first one would be mugger or marsh crocodile. The second one is estuarine or salt water crocodile. This is the scariest one. 
The third one is Ghadiyal and the most important one, its status is critically endangered and we are carrying out a lot of conservation practices to save Ghadiyal because it is very important for the ecosystem of rivers, its presence is very important. So, we will be discussing about the first two in a like a very uh, short in a brief way and we will be discussing about Ghadiyal in a descriptive way. The first one is Magar or Mars Crocodile, see it is the most alligator looking like species as you can see in this picture also it looks like an alligator, most uh, out of all the three it, it is uh, it has the closest resemblance to an alligator. This conservation status is vulnerable, not critically endangered, nothing like least concerned, it is vulnerable remember that and, it, and its pre presence uh, uh, present in sites appendix 1, so that is the conservation status that has been attributed. The special part about this is that it is found in freshwater ecosystems. Now, what happens in freshwater ecosystems that man-made activities are also carried out in freshwater ecosystems, we need fresh water. So, a lot of conflict with uh, conflict regarding man and wild takes place, so this is one of the threats to this because freshwater ecosystem is the is the habitat of this uh, crocodile, it was uh, it, it is native to southern part of Iran to the Indian subcontinent extending to Bhutan and Myanmar, but in Bhutan and Myanmar it is extinct already, so it is mostly found in Iran and India, so that is it and uh, habitat destruction is one of the threat, entanglement and its drowning in the fish nets is the second threat, the third one is increasing incidence of conflict with humans, this is very much uh, you know apparent because freshwater ecosystems are wherever they are present, the conflict with humans is very very much uh, understood. The second one is salt water crocodile or the estuarine crocodile, this is one of the biggest crocodile species and it is very scary. The habitat loss for this is that it is uh, carried out for illegal hunting, their leather is very important from like um, use for humans, a lot of things are made out of their leather, leather, so illegal hunting is carried out. Secondly, it is known as the man eater, so people uh, fear a lot, people just try to kill them whenever they see them, so that is uh, that is a problem and habitat loss in case of any species that is one of the threats always. So, it is uh, the status is least concerned, where is it found? It is found, it is like present almost everywhere especially in the east coast of India, for example, this is the east coast of India here, throughout this east coast this is found up to southeast Asia, so it is very much uh, prominent here and its uh, conservation status is least concerned, just remember that it is also known as the man eater and it is also found near Australia, on the coast of Australia, so just remember the salt water uh, or estuarine crocodile. This is you know very apparent that whatever is salt water, whatever the habitat of which species is salt water, it will be found near the oceans. So, whatever our water bodies are there near the oceans, whatever habitat can be found, you will find this crocodile there. The next one is the most important one, it is the ghadial or the fish eating crocodile. It is known as the gavial or the fish eating crocodile. Its conservation status is critically endangered, so that is a red alarm for us present in sites appendix 1 and wildlife protection act schedule 1. So, uh, this is very important from important species point of view, you should know that uh, sites uh, sites which appendix the species comes in and also the schedule and on under which it is registered in wildlife protection act. So, you know it was widely distributed on in the Indian subcontinent, but now in India it is only found in of Chambal Sanctuary and Katonia Ghat Wildlife Sanctuary. So, what are the threats that you can see or you know what could be the threats that come uh, that come from it, around Chambal a lot of sand mining takes place, a lot of illegal hunting uh, hunting is also carried out, so and this, this has a very fragmented population, so that is one of the threats that because of sand mining and because of the development activities being carried out here, those individuals are being harmed, their habitat is being destroyed. Recently, what happened was that the Punjab government reintroduced, earlier uh, Ghadiyal was present in Bias river, but then it got depleted, its population depleted with time, 
ghadiyals were reintroduced in the uh, bias conservation reserve in punjab and now they are thriving there also so they have been artificially reintroduced so this becomes very important from your current affairs point uh, point of view also the species is, is critically endangered and one of the most important species has been recurrently asked by upsc so prepare this in detail the uh, characteristic part is that it has a long snout here unlike the other two species of crocodile that we discussed it has a very long snout the next one is bugan leo kichla it is a critically endangered bird which is found only in arunachal pradesh this bird get it, gets its in name from the local bugan community of west kameng district of arunachal pradesh only 15 to 40 birds are left in the wild now and uh, as you can as i already told you that this is the status this carries the status of critically endangered what you have to remember here is that what is the habitat where is it where is it present uh, after like you know it was spotted after independence for the first time so 15 years of birds discovery were celebrated by the arunachal pradesh government so this is a very important bird for, for that state and uh, for prelims point of view only uh, like a few uh, a few num uh, a very good a very less number of birds are present and there are two things that you have to remember is that one is the eagle nest wildlife sanctuary where it is found and the other one is singchung bugun village community reserve these are the only two areas where this bird can be found you can see it here it's a very small bird and its conservation status is like very critically endangered so just remember the name and remember the name of bugun community which is present in west kameng district after which this bird is tamed the next one is again a critically endangered bat which is known as the collar leaf nosed uh, nosed bat where is it present it's present only in one cave it's called the hanuman halli cave in karnataka earlier it was present in three caves but out of the previous two ca caves it has got extinct why has it uh, why has it happened why its population has you know dwindled from those two caves because of the illegal or you know the granite mining that was carried out it was causing a lot of fires due to extraction of granite in those caves so uh, those bats are either they died or they left those cave and now they are present only in the hanuman halli cave in karnataka in kolar district of karnataka just remember the conservation status it is critically endangered and this illegal granite mining was carried out now what do the bats do actually for the environment fruit eating bats for example they help in pollination there are many fruiting plants or trees which depend only on the pollination that is carried out by bats when bat move uh, when a bat moves from one tree to another or from one fruit to another it carries seeds and it uh, pollinates the seeds of the of these plants and trees so for the regeneration of environment for th the existence of these species of trees such bats are very important bats are very important important from ecological point of view so uh, karnataka government seeing this that it has got extinct from two caves and due to this granite mining it carried out it said that you know 30 acres of area around those caves will be protected area so any development area uh, development activity that has to be carried out has to take permission from national board of wildlife National Board of Wildlife is a statutory body it is there for protection of wildlife and it is headed by the prime minister of india so when it comes under that jurisdiction so you can guess the importance of the species just remember the cave it is located in its conservation status and the area where it is found even if a not even if not a, a separate question is uh, not asked by upsc you can see it in the statements and you can and uh, learning about this uh, these species can help you eliminate a lot of wrong statements there so make sure that you prepare these species in detail tomorrow we'll uh, meet with a set of new species for environment and we'll by prelims or be, uh, long before that we will cover all aspects of environment species important from prelims point of view so uh, all the best to you prepare well keep working hard and stay tuned